three, two, one, let's go. Hello, my beautiful channel family. Today is July the 11th, and this is your brother Adam with the Watchman Adam News Channel back with another End Times video. Family, let's go. I pray you guys are doing well today. I love you, and keep them eyes on the sky because our redemption draweth nigh. Family, we're going home soon, and that's facts. Because it is so apparent that we are living in the biblical end times. Family, that trumpet's about to blow. And we're going to be ready to go on this channel. So family, don't fear and don't lose hope. Our Messiah's coming soon. That isn't a joke. Because that trumpet is about to blow. And family, when it does, you already know. Let's go. Alrighty guys, let's look at the verse of the day. And it's Amos 5.4. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. Guys, in the comment section below, comment a Bible verse, and we may use it as the verse of the day in a future video, and give you a shout out. Okay guys, today I have a very interesting video. We're going to look at an article from Israel 365 News. And I think it's going to show you the condition of the heart and mind of some of the Knesset members in Israel. Now, I have a disclaimer. I want to say that Messiah, Mashiach, has already come. He come nearly 2,000 years ago, and his name is Jesus. But many inside of Israel have not accepted Jesus as Messiah, and family, it's really sad. They actually believe in Israel. Some sets of Judaism believe that there's going to be two Messiahs. We're going to get into that in a little bit. But now, let's look at this article from Israel 365 News. And this end time headline reads... Anti-judicial reform protests turn anti-Messiah. Family, let's get right into this. So for months now, we've been covering the protests about the anti-judicial reform here on this channel. Well, check this out. So the protests against the judicial reform measures being proposed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's coalition government took on religious overtones as protesters targeted M.K. Likud, Ariel Connor's home in Hafia on Thursday night. And family, they plastered his neighborhood with posters proclaiming, Here lives a messianic. Okay, family, right there, that's a picture of the Knesset member that they targeted. Okay, his name is Ariel Collner. And I did some research on him. He seems to be really controversial. He's actually a member of the Likud party. So these protesters targeted him. Yeah, family, they convened on his house, went outside his house, were chanting, and hanging posters of him all over his street. Now, he did file a complaint about the matter with security forces, and he responded to the protesters, saying, The anarchist cowards came in the dead of the night and vandalized the residential building where I live and the bus stop across the street. Do you really think they will succeed in breaking me? A complaint will be filed with the police. We'll see if the enforcement system in the Omasan's authority will also act against other people. My answer and act. All the reform laws quickly and with full force. Now guys, he is a key figure in the judicial reform bill that they're trying to pass that has Israel in turmoil. And he quoted this guy right here. This is David Ben-Gurion. Now, David Ben-Gurion was the primary national founder of the state of Israel and the first prime minister of Israel. In so many ways, he's kind of like the George Washington of Israel. He's highly respected in Israel, and he's a founding father. Now, this is the quote that Ariel Connor used when he quoted the former prime minister of Israel. Zionism is a messianic movement. This is perhaps the only word that fits it. It is a movement that works for the redemption of the people and the redemption of the world. Now, family, that's an obvious reference to the Messiah. Now, guys, I'm going to read straight from the article the rest of the video. I want you to listen. This is very profound. Judaism mandates a strict belief in Messiah, Mashiach, literally the anointed one in Hebrew. It's listed as one of the 13 principles of faith encapsulated in the statement, I believe with full faith in the coming of the Messiah, even though he tarries with all that, I await his arrival with every day. Now, I believe that was a quote from David Ben-Gurion. Now, family, this next part is interesting. The concept of Messianism originated in Judaism, in which there are two stages in the Messiah. Initially, Mashiach ben Yosef, 
Messiah from the house of Joseph. And Mashiach being David, Messiah from the house of David. Now the first one, Mashiach being Yusuf, is a mundane practical process representing an era in which the Jewish exiles return to the land of Israel. The desert will bloom, and the third temple in Jerusalem will be built. Wars will be waged against the forces of evil that oppress Israel. Mashiach ben Yosef prepares the world for Mashiach ben David, who will be a specific figure who will reinstate the David dynasty and fight the war of Gog and Magog. This is not to be confused with Messianic Judaism, which is a branch of Christianity, it says, that incorporates Jewish elements. And family, we obviously know that Judaism, they reject the fact that Jesus is the Messiah. Now, family, when I saw this article this morning and I saw that the rhetoric had went anti-Messiah and I read this article, I knew I had to share it with you guys. Family, like I said earlier in the video, it's really sad that so many in Israel reject the fact that Jesus is the Messiah. And, you know, inside of Israel, there's been a lot of people inside of Israel lately that's been talking about Messiah and calling upon the Messiah to come. And family, the day will come. When the Jews will anoint their so-called Messiah. And family, I believe on that day could be the day that the Most High pours out his wrath. Saying, hey, you wanna, you know, you don't want to accept my son as the Messiah, but someone else comes in their own name and you accept them as Messiah. Family, we're truly living in the end times. Keep on looking up. Stay strong. Stay in that full armor of God. Make sure you're talking to God every day that you're praying. Because family, we're in the final moments of the end of days. We're going home soon. I mean, guys, just look around this world we're living in. In so many ways, it is screaming the return of Jesus. Everything that Jesus said that would be happening and going down prior to his return. Family, tell me we're not seeing it all go down in our generation. The fig tree generation. The generation that shall not pass away. And family, that's why the message of what Jesus did for us on the cross is so very important in these end times. And as always, what you said, we close this video out by me giving you the gospel of our salvation. So, according to scripture found in our Bible, Jesus was born of a virgin and family, he lived a sinless, perfect life. He lived his entire life without ever once sinning. That's why Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for remission of our sin debt. And at the age of 30, Jesus began his earthly ministry and family in only three years. He changed this entire world forever. And guys, he did. Because here we are, nearly 2,000 years later, still singing praises to our Jesus. And at the age of 33, in the biggest act of love that humanity has ever seen or will ever see, Jesus was nailed on that cross. He had a crown of thorns shoved upon his head. Jesus was mocked. Jesus was beaten in front of his mother. Jesus spilled his perfect innocent blood for remission of our sins. My sins, your sins, your uncle's sins, your aunt's sins, your best friend's sins, your boss's sins, your mama's sins. Family, everybody's sins. Jesus did it all on the cross. Then Jesus laid there for how long, family? For three days, three days, three days. At that third day, he busted that tomb wide open. Hey, family, no tomb could hold our Messiah. And then Jesus ascended to go be with the Father. And on this channel, we do know he's coming back for us soon. And family, what is it we're looking for? It's that Titus 2.13, blessed hope. And family, world events and Bible prophecy is declaring the soon and inner return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Family, you stay in that full armor of God and keep on looking up because our redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is coming soon because family, that trumpet is about to blow. And when it does, you already know. Let's go, Harpazzo! Well, my beautiful channel family, as always, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and feel free to share it. Family, it helps us out so much, and I do appreciate it. And I know I tell you guys this all the time, but I'm going to tell you again. Thank you for all the love and support of this channel. You guys are such a huge blessing to me. I want you to know that I love you, and I appreciate every last one of you guys. And family, I got a praise report. I got to tell you this. Not only have I got a raise at work, but my manager has come to me and talked to me and told me that they're looking at me for a leadership position. 
Family, you have no idea how grateful I am to be in the position I'm in where the Most High has placed me. And I think it's really cool that I get to make bread. It's non-GMO. It's all natural bread. Family, I'm making manna. God's good, isn't he, guys? And family, this weekend, we're hitting the streets of Columbia, South Carolina to go pass out hope bags to the homeless. Hopefully get a few people off the streets for the night. So if you could pray for our trip this weekend, family, I would greatly appreciate it. Well, my beautiful channel family, the next time, Brother Watchman Adam signing out in 3, 2, 1. I love you and keep them eyes on the sky. Because our redemption draweth nigh. Because that trumpet is about to blow. And family, when it does, you already know. Let's go Harpazo. Later.